Hey everybody, welcome to the nightly vid. The whole market pretty much did the same thing today, so we're not going to have much to talk about. But we had a bad bond auction, and that occurred around noon, followed by a 30-minute simultaneous break, which caused us to take the inside day down spy. You're going to see it cause QQQ to go rev strat on the day twice. We gap down by rev strat, and then three rev strat again, going all the way back through the broad information. So you can see new lows, new highs, and new lows as they do. Um, you'll see Dow Jones with the inside day down simultaneous break confirming the SPY. If we go to IWM, you'll see the 2-2 in the two -two day down simultaneous break across the whole market. Now, the biggest thing I want to showcase tonight is just the data and how the data helps us intraday. So what we'll see is at the end of the day, it's an 83% down day SPY, 61% down day on the NASDAQ. Now, intraday, we want to see what was happening before the puke occurred. So if you go and take a look, you'll see 75% of the SPY trading lower, 50% of the NASDAQ. And then when we look to the sectors, you'll see we had you know some uptrends, right? So like 16% up here, 19% up, 19%, 27% in the tech. So some uptrends, but notice 90% of real estate, 90% of financials. 80% cyclicals, 80% industrials, 80% energies, 80% utilities, nearly 80% basic materials. And then we had a little bit of strength in healthcare, staples, and tech, which makes a little sense. You know, they have been strong. But before the puke, you'll see how much of the market's going down. It's like, well, if we added all these together and then divided it by the number here, what would we have? Let's take a look. So if we take a look, you can see we add all those together minus the indexes or indices and then divide by the number to get the average. And on average, 73% of each sector was going down, right? On average, we could do a mean or whatever and get more specific, but hopefully that makes sense. 70% of the market reversed. Did we talk about a simultaneous break yesterday on the nightly vid? We did. So when the data says, hey, 73% of the market reversed or more, depending on sector, and Alex said there's a simultaneous break coming, then what do we do, right? So the first thing is, if we go back and just take a look here at that data, this tells us, right, market's going down today and NASDAQ was a little stronger prior to the bond auction. But the day gets confirmed or negated by the 60s and the 30s, which means what? Well, in the morning, since we have about... You know, uh, it's it'd be like 13, 60 minute candles or 30 minute candles in a day. We can get a correct number here. Yeah, so 12 30s in a day. What we can see is let's go to spying cues. So in the morning, we did go 2 2 to the upside, attempting to counter the simultaneous breakdown. At the open, we did have, you know, about the same number. We had like over half the spy two down on the day. So this was trying to counter that for an outside day, which can occur, right? And then you'll see we had the 2 2 2 again with the day being green. And then one, two up, two up. And then we had a 2-2 two -two reversal on the bond auction. So knowing when that news comes up, what did this do? Well, this 2-2 two -two reversal changed the week and day via gauging the magnitude, right? We fail the morning highs. So you can see if we go to a 60 chart, this is the first 60 of the day. We reclaim that. And then we take the morning lows, which would be the first target. When that occurs, you'll see that 30 signal put the day back in force. So when those 30s broke, how much of the market was breaking? I'm not 100% sure if we are going to have the data here, but we'll take a look. Yeah, so you can see the 30 reversal on SPY. This was two minutes into the new 30. This is the 30. So two minutes in, we had about 16 to 20% of the market going, right? So not everything. And if we got the update, I'm not sure if he posted it. Yep, so this was the daily. You can see there's a little bit, slightly less numbers in here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so we didn't get any updates on the 30s, but I can tell you for sure, when SPY went shooter 30 down, when QQQ went shooter 30 down, when Dow Jones went shooter 30 down, when IWM went shooter 30 pivot machine gun down or 2230 down, you had all of those daily signals to the downside kicking in, right? And you'll see where's the weakest stuff. Well, the weakest stuff is going to be like IWM. Notice it was nowhere near high a day, right? It was closer to changing that day and week red. So right when this broke, the week goes red. That's one of the weaker names. And you'll see it takes this out, takes this out, and then keeps going. If we go to the Dow Jones, you'll see when the whole market recovered in the morning, this didn't recover, right? It pretty much went nowhere. 
It was just stuck inside the morning range. So in this 30 minute shooter 2 2 reversal, what this did is change the date. The week was already red. And where's it going to go? Well, here's your broadening information we gave you yesterday, right? New highs, new lows. Right? That's what it's supposed to do. So you're going to notice we confirm or negate what we know to be true on the scanner, right? It's looking at that data every 30 and 60 minutes intraday, which is why when you're an intraday trader, we say, you know, every new 60 matters, right? And we can throw the 30s in there as well. Now, in this case, if you were a 60 guy, this was not a 60 setup per se. We did have the inside 60 rev strat Dow Jones. Did the inside 60 simultaneous break Dow Jones IDBM rev strat to the downside. So it's another way in, right? If we go to spy, this was just a three. We got a Qs. That was just a three. But one thing we can do is we can double our signals. We can do that by using extended hours or looking at the futures. So you'll see high of day. Here's your shooter 60 QQQ. If you're going to spy, shooter 60 spy. Notice pivot machine gun of these guys. So it gets clearer. The Dow Jones, rev strat shooter 60. The IWM, double inside 60. So this was a 60 simultaneous break confirming more than half the market going down at the point of these signals breaking. That's a strong signal, right? And then anything red on the week, we had no evidence of a monthly buyer because the week was red. So this is how we want to think about what we're doing when we're looking at the data, we're looking at the signals. We always want to confirm and negate. Now, what this also tells us, right, is, you know, staples. We said yesterday, staples and utilities are likely to come back in. Did utilities come back in? It did, right? And this wasn't on a tech rally, although they tried to buy some tech this morning, right? This was just the whole market came back in. So from exhaustion risk on utilities, you know, just under those highs, right, they bring them in. Staples from exhaustion risk, right back in the broadening formation. Now, what didn't do that, right? The strongest things in the market are going to be the things that didn't reverse today. So we can go to setups and we could say, you know, anything inside day, neither confirm the upside or negated by going to the downside. So all these ones, which you're going to see there's, you know, it's kind of slim pickings, but dollar general, dollar tree, SO in the utilities, EA, and we can you know, filter this by volume, get rid of some of the nobodies in here. We can just keep going down, right? Is there anyone else in here? No one to really talk about. So you can see not many things held inside, which is why this is such a strong sell. Now we can also ask, you know, what didn't reverse? Because the things going up while the whole market's puking, those have to be the strongest in the market. So we can look at what was going up yesterday, what's still going up. And we can ideally go for the things that are showing green. So we can remove the two up in red. We can just put continuation or hammer in here. So if we do that, you know, I'm not sure. Let's just see what this looks like here. Do, 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 do. Looks like it's not going to load, but let's pull it up. So I'm double check the data is correct here. Yeah, so for some example, or for some reason, Ah, so the continuation is going to show anything that's red as well. So what we can do is since we're on the daily, we can just say greater than or equal to zero. Boom, gets rid of all those guys. And then what we could do is say like, we want stuff that was up today. So like, let's just say it was up greater than like a dollar. So what went up today? Well, if we filter by dollar change or change, GEV, right, which I'm not actually 100% sure what they do. CME, which was up still on the day. CBOE, VIX, VIX. Uh, bit X, VIX, right? Bitcoin, 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 Bitcoin. So they're still buying Bitcoin while the market pukes, right? That's a good thing to know. The next thing is they're still buying gold, right? Nuggets, the gold miners, AEM, which is in the gold, IBITs, Bitcoin, right? So this is where they're still buying. And for some reason, silver's not showing up, I imagine, because it wasn't up a dollar on the day. But if we go and search SLV, Silver's in there too. So if we go to those guys, talked about those yesterday. Gold's still confirming. And this was also kind of a hint, right? When they start buying precious metals, normally stocks don't perform the best. At least tech stocks normally don't. Uh, if we go to staples, or not staples, uh, silver, you'll see silver. We talked about the weekly signal on Twitter. Boom, still going. That's a weekly PMG up. So what have we identified here? Since these are still going up, they still have, you'll see full time from continuity, the month, the week, the day. Since that's true on silver, we have institutional buying going on in silver while the rest of the market just reversed today. 
So it, it's kind of like taking the market's clothes off is the way I like to put it. And it's, you know, a little jarring way to think about it. But when the whole market crashes out, anything still going up has institutional buyers, especially if it's full time frame continuity down and you have things full time frame continuity up. So, you know, we can go and take a look at some of the other names that were on that list, like GEV. Not sure, right? So you'll see it's right at the highs at this point, CME. So you can see CME while the market's going down. This is hammer day to the upside, full time from continuity. So while they crashed out, there was still a buyer in there, right? Which, you know, wasn't crazy. CBOE is going to be the same thing, though. So you're going to see still green month, week, day, and then 60. And that's while the market's crashing out in the afternoon. So these guys are more likely to go up tomorrow just because they're still buying them. We'd like to see signals. But these are some of the places we still see buyers at. So if the market were to firm up, potentially these guys explode, right? That'd be our thought process. Um, and if we go to, you know, the BitX or GBTC, whatever you want to look at. They did end up closing out pretty strong on the day and that was just firming up in the afternoon still above the day the week the month opens when that 60 broke whereas spy you're seeing the spy inside 60 down they're still going down so a little bit of bitcoin a little bit of gold and silver that's what we're seeing um but hopefully this is educational and shows you uh a little bit of how the data works and what we're actually looking for right the simultaneous breaks having all this evidence in the side of our trade uh the last thing i can add is what we want to do is we want to get all this data in our favor, right? So when we're looking at this, if we have an 80% down market, unless we have every single, you know, every single one of these 90, you know, 80, 90% of the 60s rejecting that, the opposite direction, it's unlikely you're going to get an outside day because most of the market's trending down on the daily basis. What you're simply waiting for is 60s back in the other direction. That's all I've got, though. Um, tonight, you know, we're, it's going to be sparse pickings. What we're going to do is kind of just stick to the names we have been watching, as well as the indexes, and see, you know, as things stabilize a bit, what we have. If you're going to be looking at anything, you're likely going to be looking at inside days, although there, you know, wasn't many of them. So, just inside day, or oops, we go inside day lists until I'm a little tired here. But if we go inside setup on the day, I'll just say greater than three ATR with an average volume greater than 2 million. Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Guild in the health cares, and maybe five, which is five below, which is going to be with the Dollar Tree as the Dollar Generals. Could be watching those guys. You could be watching Chewy, Inside Day, and Foot Locker, and that's really about it. If we go to the shooters, we will have some shooter scenario threes, meta, hood, crowd, and XPI. If you're looking at any of these names on this list, um, if you like the one threes, here's your one three two setups, just like that. If we go to Two up in red, we got pretty much nothing. And if you're looking for just the one three setups for the one three twos, you're gonna have a lot of them. You'll see NVIDIA, MU, Meta, LRCX, MCHP, AMAT. So all the chips we said to be watching yesterday, crowd technology at TER, chips, NXPI, chips, net technology. So a lot of tech, a lot of chips with one threes. Those are gonna be broadening formations. And I guess the last thing we can take a look at here since we're teaching today is if we go to those chips and those technologies, you're gonna see the semis, same thing, shooter 60 to call the highs. Now in the morning, if we get a tech or semis with those inside bars, right? In the morning, a lot of tech and semis did reverse up. Some of them didn't, but a good chunk of them did. Now, if we go back to those 30s, you're gonna see the broadening formation. This is why we have to know where we're at within the series and know what signals are occurring. So you'll see the two twos in the morning, the inside 30s up in the morning, new highs, exhaustion risk going into recent highs. Then you'll see slight higher highs. So we have new highs, slight higher highs. Shooter, pivot machine gun, pivot, 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 all these guys out in one go. This is the rev strat, lower low, higher high, 
lower low. And this is because once you go <coughs> once you go outside of this inside bar, it's a three, it's a broadening formation. So if it goes new highs and then it reclaims that inside bar again, you're going new lows again. It's a battle between these inside bars levels. We got a semis. Semis was a little different, but you're gonna see we did take out a good chunk of those pivots in here. Not all of them, right? Which would have been preferred. But same thing. So you're gonna see in the morning, the three, one, two, thirty. That's a good long signal. Two, 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 flip it shorter, get out, right? From exhaustion risk. And then three takes out the lows and the highs of yesterday's range, the rev strat. Now going into tomorrow, right? You're gonna have a lot of shooters in the semis with the 132 setting up. That's what we can be watching. I'll be with you guys bright and early in the morning, see what those gaps are doing and what the futures are looking like. Adios, everyone, and have a good rest of your night.